go. Recording in progress. That means we're doing it and we're doing it live the way Bill O'Reilly intended. So I'm <laughs> Zeus. Uh, yeah, exactly. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to Bolded Slugs. And uh, today with me is my guest, Richard Snyder. Tell the people how you are, Richard. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm Richard Snyder. Uh, I'm doing great. Um, it's a beautiful Thursday morning, Thursday Fan- afternoon, whatever. I woke up late. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I want to ask real quick, with a name like Richard, do you get when you meet brand new people? Hey, Rick. Hey, Ricky. They just automatically give you, they shorten your name. And they give you like automatic nicknames within five seconds of meeting them. Richard sounds to me like a name where that would happen. Does that happen to you frequently? It, uh, it, it, it does happen though. N- though only one guy has ever called me Ricky for short. And I peed in that guy's laundry detergent. So that I think is, is the one and only appropriate response. <laughs> Just because you, you want that familiarity with people. But you also don't want them just like giving you nicknames before they've earned it. Like, who are you? Who are you, Dave? Gary? I mean, I don't want to crap on anybody named Dave or Gary. I'm sure they're wonderful people, but don't call me something that I'm not, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Richard, I want to start off right at the beginning. We're in a brand new era, I've been told, even though all evidence to the contrary suggests we're going to stay exactly the way that we have been. but. We're in, a post, we're in a post-strike world. So for you as, as a writer, what does that post-strike world look like for you? Is it different than the world before? Is it the same? Where are you at in your, in your journey? Uh, where I'm at right now. Um, and, and, you know, it's going to be a minute, I feel, before any of us really like differentiates the reality from our perception but for now it, at least for the you know for the wga because sag after i'm i'm following the debate on ai going on with the sag after contract that's that's a, a big deal for sure uh and yeah. I, I don't know if you just uh saw this but uh uh fake carol lombardini uh has announced her retirement uh, so no! yeah, it's, 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 it's a sad day. Yeah. It's, it's all over. It's all over the, the, the tweaks. I won't ever call it X by itself. Cause that's stupid, but, uh, we're in a transitional period, man. Transitional period. A lot of, a lot of things are happening or have yet to happen. So just kind of want to get, get the vibe. Are you the type of person that as soon as the strike was canceled, did you have seven meetings the following day? Like everybody no. else did. Cause I, I, have... I sure as hell didn't. I have honestly never had a formal general meeting before. Not one? Not one. Not even once. So then we're we're, we're equal there is because neither have I, but I always thought it was because my proximity to L.A. is 1,500 miles to the east. You're in. You're in L.A. Is that correct? Yes. I live in North Hollywood. So have you gone? Uh, or or wanted to go or know anybody who has done you know the water bottle tour because I'm always curious like how do you get I've I've heard complicated and convoluted stories about how people have gotten meetings they've they've cold queried they they've emailed they bumped into a dude at a Starbucks and was like you know do that cliche California thing where everybody has a script in their back pocket. Have you heard those stories? Are they true? Or do you think it's something, something different? Um, I think it's true because I have dipshitted my way into like, oh, by the way, can I curse on here? Absolutely. Fuck. I don't give oh, a okay. shit. All right. Awesome. All right. <laughs> yeah. I, I dipshitted my way into things. Like I did like have an a little informational lunch with uh, an alumni from one of my alma maters who just came out here because that's something that occasionally happens and she got me in front of an agent once so mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. came nothing came of it oh but, did, did they offer you uh i'm gonna butcher it because i don't care how it's pronounced the lacroix La, La Croix. did they offer you the uh, allegedly fruit flavored beverage that is quite frankly it just sounds disgusting regardless of flavor 
Uh, no, honestly, if anything, uh, this particular agent just seemed to want to get me out of his office. <laughs> you know, that for me feels kind of like the vibe. And I, and I, I want to kind of preface this by saying it is specifically my own opinion, because boy, do I have them. But I feel as a, a, a pre-WGA, non-repped, non-agented, non-represented person uh, at all, that the moment the strike was over, it really felt like good luck, kid, uh, to those of us who, in our way, whether physically striking uh, on the picket lines or, or doing things because we weren't local, um, it very much kind of felt like, oh, hey, you guys that uh, we needed for six months uh, to help us win this thing, uh, we've got jobs to go back to, so screw you. Uh, ha ha has that kind of, that's my takeaway from a lot of the things that I've been reading, especially on social media. Has that been at all how you feel? You're closer, you're local. Is that experience different? Um. I, I think I've seen some of the same social media posts that you have. Um, the circle apparently is not that big. There's like seven people that run all of the rooms. So we probably we probably all follow the same people. Isn't corporate consolidation great? <laughs> right. Yeah. Your half um, an hour lunch is 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 now completely unpaid and you have to have it at your desk. You fuck. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um. So I've seen those same ones that you have, and I definitely understand your bitterness. Um, I do feel, well, I, I don't think it's particularly aimed at pre-WGA in, like, specifically because, like, and at, because, like, I also know some WG, I, I have some friends who were working writers pre-strike okay. who are not right now so as also, far as also a common theme is 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 jobs that you had, had had vanished so not not uncommon to hear that as well yeah and uh if anyone in the know is uh listening shout out to my buddies zach and leah please staff them um oh, but... for sure yeah if you want to name drop this is absolutely the show to do it uh, at, name drop people who you don't think want to be name dropped. I don't give a shit. Let's 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 hype up people who need to be hyped up. That's the whole point of of of, of talks like this is to get people the recognition. So if you want to pub somebody, like I'll throw it in the show notes, and we'll we'll make sure that they get unnecessary amounts of attention. Good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll uh, let let's reconnect later about that because I don't want to derail this but, for sure. Um, Oh, you're but, assuming this was on rails to begin with. There's where where <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. You I tried. I'll tell you this right now. Uh, I tried scripting some of this. I wrote down like a couple questions uh to, to ask to keep things sort of in a in in a framework. But the idea that this is at all uh going to be a, a coherent <laughs> session, uh that ship that ship sailed the moment I pressed record. Oh, that, that that's perfectly fine by me because I am a master of derailing conversations. But uh, overall, like, and this is, it, it. it's really hard to judge because we're in the middle of November and mm -hmm. in a non-strike world, at, like at this point, everything is shut down or is well on its way. Right. Uh, so, my understanding is November 15th is the day that normally everything shut down, which was yesterday as of recording. So effectively, yeah, if it wasn't shut down before, it's likely going to be. Uh, do you do you believe that or do or do you think that because of the strikes that there will be more? Uh, I don't know necessarily like announcements or 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 like um rooms being opened up that sort of thing but do you think there will be more going on behind the scenes this year as opposed to any other normal uh kind of off period um i don't and i and i have like zero insider info to point to like one way or the other um, I don't. I I do genuinely think that the studios don't have a whole lot in 
in the barrel and i and i think that's part of why they settled like they were they were running extremely low especially doing zero business for like uh half a year seven months and then they were yeah i started in march i believe is that if i'm i went to public school so math on this show is not going to at all uh be accurate or correct um i'm still happy that my math teacher can go fuck himself because he said I'd never have a calculator in my pocket wherever I went. <laughs> and boom, here we are. So boom. Yeah. I, hey, I went to public school in Florida. So ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I, uh, I, 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 I'm going to ask you, I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to get back to this later, but I'm going to ask you, you know, do you have any Florida man stories? Cause those, those would be really good to go out on. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, I, I think I I I'm the that that whole Pete in my room in my freshman year college roommates laundry detergent story makes me a Florida man. Now, do you get uh, is is that a stable gig? Because uh, is is that uh, something that you can get maybe insurance for? Mm, <laughs> it's certainly well, not authorized by the state, according to every news article everywhere. But <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, honestly, of. Uh, uh, every gig I've worked in Florida has been low paying and uh yeah, I've never been insured. I, I had to I had to move all the way out here to, to get that stuff. If you move to Los Angeles as an improvement from Florida, what does that say about Florida? Honestly? Los Angeles Los Angeles has its 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 own fair share. I'm not entirely sure I haven't checked. Is I ten still closed? Uh, is that still uh- a thing? The ten is still very much closed, but here, here's a here's a crazy thing for you. I've been carless for a decade. In fact, being carless was actually the uh, brr, 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 the the pl- God. Imp- the word is impetus? the the impetus. There, there we, we go. go. That, we're writers. Uh, we know yeah, words. <laughs> I'm such a great writer. That's why I'm working tech. Don't ask me to spell it. I don't know. I, it, yeah. I'll i sound it out. Uh, yeah, that was actually the impetus that got me to L.A. because I got in a car crash and I drove a 21-year-old Mustang, which was definitely old enough, if not to drink itself, old enough to make me drink. So, wow. yeah. And uh, then I just... The, I didn't want to deal with that shit anymore. So whatever the whatever the faults of our public transportation system here, they were uh, far less worrisome to me than dealing with LA traffic and uh, and uh, and the bullshit of whatever beater that I could afford. And it would that's, have to be a beater. That's how you outsmart the game. You can't you you can't get stuck in traffic if you don't have a car. Suck it. Yeah. There. We we got eight subway lines here. We can do it. <laughs> so let's let's focus back up and go back a bit because I I'm very curious about where people. You say you're from you're from Florida. You're transplant to L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're right on the cusp, especially in this new. Uh, well, and I say new, but we can we can talk about whether or not it's actually new for people who aren't already established. But uh, presuming that this is a a, a new world for writers. And things are going to open up the way that the strikes have led us to believe that they will. Where do you fit? Where do you feel that you fit in terms of the work you want to do? Are you a TV guy? Are you a feature guy? Do you feel that you want to be in one or the other? Um, Like what essentially, I guess I'm asking, what work do you feel you are best suited to do that could potentially be of, of of value to someone who would perhaps make it. Um, I guess if you put a gun to my head today, I'd say TV, if only because my most battle ready scripts are all pilots. Okay. I during the pandemic, uh I I I got a major I I simultaneously got a major like a crisis of faith and a major shift in my attitude of how I wrote, what I wrote about, what format is it in? I, I I start like, so I was, I was very much drinking the Kool-Aid 
Mm -hmm. pre-pandemic oh tv is hot right lots of tv it's the golden age tv it you're not slumming it in tv anymore the way that it used to be back in the day absolutely yeah yeah and also like uh my favorite screenwriting teacher when i was in grad school was a tv writer and uh he he told us he, he he told us all the you know about the dream and i bit and i bit hard and that was, so I went to grad school in the early 2010s. I moved to LA in 2014. So uh, so I spent like a solid six years doing nothing but that. There's nothing in features. I'm, you know, I'm not going to, write, you know, they're not going to tap me to write an MCU movie. So that that's closed to me. That, okay. That's not for me. Um. Which ironically but, is is so not the case now with how many people have transitioned from uh, Nita Costa, uh, the, the, you know, director of of the Marvel. She started in TV, uh, mm -hmm. then went to you know, uh, I, I believe uh, I I forget the name of it. What is it called? Little Things, uh, something to that effect, and then transitioned easy, into the Marvels. I mean, you you could argue that Whedon did the same thing. Not that I'm al really allowed to say Whedon out loud anymore, but you get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I do. But no, you know, no. the, the idea no, that you, sure. you, you you could you know move from TV to film used to be there used to feel like there was a wall there that you just didn't cross through. I get it. Yeah, this this is pre-pandemic thinking, and this does not reflect my opinions today. Also, uh, I co-wrote with a buddy of mine. Marvel versus Capcom the movie. So I didn't write Marvel. Bro. <laughs> Bro, like send a brother a link for that. That sounds like fun. Yeah, we are we are we are very proud of it. We're still working on it. Oh man. Oh, if you see it, the argument for IP 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 uh is 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 a bit a bit of a quagmire for for many a writer. But quite frankly, there are some IP that are just like, how would this shit not sell itself? You know, Capcom versus SNK or I mean, give me give me Samurai Showdown from the Neo Geo circa 1995. Like, let's go. Uh, so if, yeah. you if you secure the rights, uh, holla at your boy that they, I'll, I'll definitely be there for that. Yeah, there's yeah, the, you know, there's money in it like. The, the 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 fucking Castlevania show on Netflix got four seasons and a spinoff. I, I mean, I still have the second. Uh, Nocturne is uh, is in my queue, but yeah, the first four seasons were, and I wasn't a Castlevania guy playing. I mean, I think I might have played on the NES back in the day because I am that old. The gray in my beer suggests so. But, oh, uh, same. Nineteen eighty five here. But yeah, man, that that show was was spectacular, uh, and it made Dracula a a sympathetic character in a show where he legit murders thousands of people. That's, and, that's good writing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Especially because like, you know, they didn't even, you know, they didn't really mess with anything in the mythos, which is crazy because the, 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 you know, it's Castlevania. It's mm -hmm. a side scroller. The you you have an objective of kill Dracula, and that's really as far as it goes. And I've got like non gamer friends of mine who really like the show who are like, um, you know, uh, th th this is amazing. I should play the games. And it's like, uh, the games are the games don't have the story for this. They're good games, but don't don't they're, they you might not like them for the same reason that you like the story. And it's a it, it 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 is a it is a pity that Warren Ellis is a piece of shit. But at the same time, like someone else who's not a piece of shit who has talent can take an IP like this and go to town and it can be successful and this, that's this is the kind of true. stuff where it's like yeah in 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 the right hands or in even just different hands <laughs> uh or you, hand fair point i i am i am I'm, I'm 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 showing up my nubs here for the for the listeners so but going back to what you said about you know capcom versus <laughs> marvel no but this this is this is is is, is great is because you would think on the surface um, I mean, you could even go back to, you know, comic book movies in general or just different adaptations of various IP kind of from times immemorial is that 
some lend itself to good storytelling, but then some that don't are oftentimes the ones that, well, you know, if your entry into Castlevania is the TV show, I, I would, I would kind of tell you to stop there because going backward ain't going to help you. If anything, it'll confuse the shit out of you. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I watched, I watched a YouTube video about the timeline of Castlevania and just Don't my brain, my brain hurt. And it was like, nope, I'm going to stick to the animated stuff. That's much, much more palatable, easier to understand. But yeah. when you have an IP, like where's the story in like a Marvel versus Capcom kind of thing. And you're looking at it like, it's a, it's a team up fighter game of disparate, like Japanese inspired and, you know, Western Marvel comic bookies. Like, do you really think there's a story verse, you know, of Cyclops versus M. Bison? And I would argue you're goddamn right. There's a story yeah. there. It just depends on, on what story you're trying to tell and how you're uh, doing it. Uh, uh, honestly, like I've been, so I, I, I'm, I've always been a big Street Fighter fan and always been into like how, like, their fighting game universe mm -hmm. is wild. I wouldn't call it necessarily well put together, but I I, I would not disagree with you at all. <laughs> but it, it's also like it's so much fun, and I and I've always wanted to like play around with play around with like the characters in it. And honestly, the thing about Marvel that I, I don't think comes through so well in the MCU. But if you go back and read, like, the comics, like, I, I went on a major kick for Cl Chris Claremont's run of X-Men. And... I grew up in that era. Good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, and I've honestly never read, like, classic X-Men comics before. But it's like, it is wackadoodle shit. Like... You know, it's it's I mean, the idea that you can get superpowers uh, to the degree where you blink and you've destroyed either an entire solar system or, you know, the multiverse stuff, you know, gods in space. I mean, it's literally just. Well, I, I mean, I'm not necessarily advocating for people to go on LSD trips, but some things you discover in places you've you got to take a trip to get there. Uh, and the idea then that that wackadoodle kind of just weird shit people emotionally attach themselves to identify with and relate to I mean, because X-Men is ostensibly uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an immigrant story. It's, it's, it's a, it's an, it's a story where people mm -hmm. are othered. Uh, that's why X-Men two is widely regarded as, as the best of, of the bunch, because it's telling a story about different people who are searching for acceptance while also having knives come out of your hand and you can stab dudes. That's fun. Who, who wouldn't yeah. want to have not, well, I don't know. Metal detectors would probably suck. MRI mm. would be impossible. Uh, it, it it just harkened back to my teenage days, and uh, I had a buddy who kept wearing steel-toed boots, and every single store he walked into in the mall set off the fucking metal detector. So those those stories, you know, where do you feel like your voice is? Because everybody everybody's going to tell you, you got to find your voice, you got to have a voice, you got to say something. So if these are the types of stories that you're looking to tell. What is what is your voice in those stories saying? Um, I, well, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can say without ego. I've, I, I found my voice long ago, and I'm, I'm, I can articulate that now. And it's a dark, absurdist, uh, dystopian comedy. And that seems to be where all of my stuff lives. And even if I don't start out there, I always wind up there. It always comes back to that. The journey of finding love in a hopeless place, you might say. Uh, I don't know if you're a Rihanna fan at all. That was that was that was a, that was a that was a song drop. Sorry. Uh, you're you're good, but I I I understood that reference, and yeah, you know, I th I I think that's a pretty astute statement for that. Given you know the the state of the world at large, you know we're we're in the middle of uh, 
I, I hesitate to call it anything other than a conflict in the Middle East before people start throwing shit. Uh, you've got uh, a government that may or may not work depending on the afternoon uh, here in the States. Uh, you know, the, the climate, mm -hmm. we're ruining it if we haven't already mm -hmm. fucked it completely. So yeah. is... Do do you feel like it's gallows humor or do you feel like it's catharsis? Um, or are are those things different in your mind? Uh honestly a little of column A and a little of column B. Like I I definitely like grew up on the Edge Lord era of cartoons. Like I I, I you know, I was raised on The Simpsons, Beavis and Butthead. And the uh, classics as they were, yeah. And I, I, I had a South Park phase. Um, I, I honestly what was watching King of the Hill right before hopping onto this call. Um, <laughs> we all carry around some pocket sand, or we should. I, I, absolutely, Dale, Dale, Dale Gribble, Dale R Gribble. R.I.P. R.I.P. Dale. Rip King. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, and those honestly, especially the more I think about it, the more like my judge has probably been my North Star for like what I do because it is, it is Edgelord. It is, oh my God, he said that, but I don't like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like give it a purpose and give it a function mm -hmm. because uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm like nearly 40. I'm I'm a little old just to be just to be amazed by like, oh my God, he said fuck on TV. I'm, I I mean, yeah. And Mike Judge, I because I remember when Beavis and Butthead first launched in MTV, you know, back mm -hmm. when music videos were a thing that you could watch on television. <laughs> hey, no offense to Rob Deerdeck. I I that dude is cashing checks and fucking doing Ollies and kickflips off of them. But for the love of God. Uh, can can we see Michael Jackson's Thriller, you know, throw on to Whitney Houston? You know, I want to dance with somebody. Can we do something? But Mike Judge, uh, who may have at one time been the, the king of edgelord humor, I would almost argue that dude is voice of the people. Because every who doesn't know a guy or two that are or are not Beavis and Butthead, one of which might actually be in Congress currently. <laughs> or, you know, Both. or or a guy who sells fucking propane and, and propane, propane accessories. accessories. <laughs> <laughs> like who doesn't know like uh, four dudes who grew up in the same town who lived and died in the same town. I mean, I'm from a small town myself. I could I could name seven people off the top of my head who absolutely represent, you know, any member of King of the Hill. So it's 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 less I think edge lord and it's more like just honest Americana. I a agree I, or disagree, good sir. I completely agree, and you and the proof is in the pudding. Beavis and Butthead got revived twice, 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 and absolutely. Yeah, they they they're on season two, and they had a uh, major motion picture. I have heard rumblings pre-strike, and this may or may not be accurate that they were going to do another feature. If not, try to do a live-action one. That would have been. I mean, who doesn't need TP on their bunghole from Lake Titicaca? That's uh, a re I... that's a reference for most of the kids who are like, "What the fuck did that <laughs> old man just say?" But but for those who are in the know, they're they're giggling they're giggling right now, and you know because. It, it oh, was that was my middle school years, man. Well, it was an honest assessment of just like pop culture and just what was going on. You know, you would watch a Danzig video and you're like, yeah, musically, it, it, it sounds great. But good Lord, his videos are fucking weird, you know, or what? whatever it was. That's what me and my buddies at the time we were doing is is you know the mst3k of it all is you just make fun of the things you see even if you like it and that's just i mean i i hate to drop the d word but that's just the discourse of things isn't it yeah no that was that that was the uh, mike judge was onto something very very you know poignant 
So you in feel the early that 90s. you want to tap into that or or not necessarily be a, a spiritual successor because uh, uh, at the time of recording, Mike Judge is not dead. Uh, so <laughs> you, you don't necessarily need to go on in his name, but you want to tell stories and things of that nature in that vein and 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 keep things going is 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 that kind of the vibe that you're after yeah yeah i i i I like my weird stuff where do you think that you let's let's play the long game out let's say that you are going to get a general or and then you get a specific and then you get into the 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 two famous words that all writers want to hear and that's bidding war where do you feel your work would be most at home? If that's a channel, if that's like, is there a, a company you want to work with, a prodco, a distro? Who who do you think your work would feel best suited for? Uh, to be honest, probably Adult Swim. The old standby. I mean, I, I I've heard that they're revamping uh, their themselves uh and they they have closed down the original the original compound but adult swim hey yeah that used to yeah it used to be a stalwart if it's not still of of awesome programming yeah and also like weird programming and th- th- like there's still like i m- m- maybe maybe there's an upstart that'll challenge them also hate to cut you off but we are at a two minute warning here. I am watching the clock uh, as as if I am trying to uh, grind it down so I don't get a last second field goal to beat me. Uh, so ah. no, we are we are rocking real close to the line. Uh, on that note, uh, before we run out of time, where can people find you? Uh, pip your socials. Where 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 do you uh, where do you most feel uh, at home corresponding with the hench folk out there? Um. Honestly, these days, I am not very online much. Oh, capital O online. I spend way too much time online. But if you want to look at a bunch of reposts on Twitter, because I don't have time or inclination to really make a discourse of my own, you can find me on Twitter or X or whatever at uh, uh, at Dead Honky, D-E-A-T-H-O-N-K-Y. That is one word. Um... Or you can follow my Instagram if you like old strike photos and screenshots from the Yakuza games at at shit Richard Eats. All, all also all one word. Fantastic. And I thought I had a clever uh, Twitter handle. No, you uh, you you certainly are, are are putting one in 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 the victory column. I'm not an Instagram guy, so uh, absolutely winner as far as I'm concerned there. Richard, I very much appreciate your time. Uh, point, pointed and constructive discussion. <laughs> this absolutely was. Appreciate Fuck you yeah. being on uh, the, the first episode of, of Bolded Slugs. Oh, and, thank you uh, for having me. And uh, we just like to talk BS here. Appreciate your time, Richard. Have a good one. Fuck yeah. You too, man. Have a good one. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bolted Slugs, the podcast, would like to thank our partners at filmsnobbery.com for hosting our show. Today's music is supplied by Cam Bashari from the Free Music Archive, licensed under Creative Commons. Bolted Slugs, the podcast, is a Dapper Duck media production.